financial arguments. Follow us on YouTube. Now we can see today with the markets the chaos is completely continuing and we can see that the market closed down today and we can see at this point everyone is saying oh my god look at this the market's going crazy does this mean the market's going to crash tomorrow no the central bank the deep state they're not ready for it they're getting prepared and ready to bring it down but it's not that point that they need to do it because who are they going to blame this on are they going to blame them on themselves they can't blame them on trump it's too early so at this point we still have some time but we can see by looking at all the economic data by all the economic indicators we can see that things are rapidly starting to fall apart and when we look at the uk we can see that things are not going as well as everyone believes it is going now many people are going to say well it's because the UK is going to be leaving the EU and they're having the Brexit this is the problem no that has nothing to do with it we've always seen these problems this has to do with what the central bankers have done over the many years and what we're seeing out in the UK is the office for national statistics well they released their inflation results for the British economy now even though most analysts were weren't expecting any huge differences the numbers updated until February paint a completely different picture now in February the inflation rate increased rather sharply on a month-to-month -month basis the CPI increased by by around 0.7 percent whereas January was was a month with deflation the current year-on-year -year inflation rate based on the CPI is 2.3 percent now it sounds like a no big deal you might think but in this case it is just one year ago in February 2016 the annual inflation rate was just 0.3 percent so what does this mean this means the inflation rate has almost eight folded in the past year with a very clear acceleration since October now several politicians and officials had been ringing the alarm bell as the savings ratio in the United Kingdom has been this hasn't been this low since the global financial crisis and in its latest update the office of budget responsibility the OBR has confirmed that the savings ratio in the UK has now turned negative nothing to worry about everything is fine what we're seeing here is inflation getting away from the central bankers and once they unleash the genie guess what it's very hard to put it back in the bottle now British citizens right now they're spending more than they are earning this means it won't be just the government debt level which will increase the total amount of household debt will increase as well and we're starting to see this in many different countries not just the UK if we look at Italy right now the Eurostat statistics on October 2016 showed that less than a third of underage 35s in Italy had left their parental home a figure 20 percentage points higher than the European average now the trend is expected to worsen as the economy continues to struggle researchers are saying that for Italians who turn 20 and 2030 it will take an average of 28 years to be able to live independently in other words many of the children that are in Italy today well they won't have grown up until they're nearing their 50s I mean think about what is happening here now we know the EU the central bankers they don't want the UK to leave they're gonna do whatever they possibly can and they're still trying to keep them from leaving now Brussels right now is slapping the UK with a 100 billion bill for the EU army and of course everyone's saying wait what they want to leave why would they get a bill now the European Union is demanding that member states including the UK spend over 86 billion despite the fact that the UK has formally chosen to leave the EU now according to a report EU citizens expect more EU action in defense and security remember many reports ago we were talking about how the central bankers they want to set up their own army separate and apart from each country having their own army and the EU wanted to set up their own police force well they're actually doing it 
and we can see right now they want the UK to pay for this even though they are leaving they're doing whatever they possibly can to keep them in and we're gonna see more of this as the date gets closer now according to a report from Bloomberg 52 of the 100 largest US cities were majority renter in 2015 with 21 of those cities having shifted from majority owner markets since the Great Recession resulted in a wave of foreclosures starting in 2009 now these include hot housing markets like Denver and San Diego and lukewarm locales like Detroit and Baltimore and when we look at the decline we can see that it started around 2011 2012 where more and more individuals in these cities decided to rent instead of purchase and a 2015 report from the Urban Institute predicted that rentership would keep rising through 2030 now think about this all these areas where they've been telling us that people are purchasing homes people are still buying well who's really buying is it the actual American who's living there or is it speculators is it hedge funds is this is it investment companies because that's what it's starting to look like now that report fits into what we've been saying for a very long time where the American people are sitting on the sidelines because we can see mortgage applications are continually declining we know since 2013 a lot of these big banks have laid off a lot of their mortgage individuals in the departments they've scaled them down quite a bit and we know a lot of the purchases have come from investment companies hedge funds foreign investors who pay cash we also see right now that the soft data well that is heading in the opposite direction of the hard data we see the Dallas Fed well it has missed expectations right now now following a disappointing manufacturing and services PMI last week this week has not started well for the soft survey data the Dallas Fed manufacturing outlook slumped in March down 7.6 percent this is the biggest drop since January of 2016 now if you notice since that time we've been seeing drops in many of these indicators where everything was rising on hope everything seemed great and then all of a sudden the steam has run out and things are now turning back to normal because they were backed by nothing now we know that bubbles are back and they're easy to spot pinpointing when they'll pop well that's a whole nother story but we know we're on the right track because whenever we see a bubble and it is blown up to the maximum we see certain individuals out there pushing their financial books real estate expos come join me in flipping and all these other things and who are we seeing right now well we're seeing Tony Robbins right now he has authored another financial book we see Susie Orman has once again reemerged to deliver her brand of financial advice they're both delivering their insights at a venue titled real estate wealth expo we where you too can learn how to become a millionaire via real estate now every time the market and I hear it on the radio too you know join me in house flipping and things like that because once the bubble reaches the height that it is now just like back in 2008 all the insiders they're trying to unload and all the retail people the small mom-and-pop people they start to come into the market and this is what we're seeing right now so this is the moment in time where generic oversimplified advice that sounds so good and too good shouted to all these crowds should be taken as the siren and a clarion call to those who are diligent in preserving their wealth to buckle up buckle down and prepare for what is coming because we've seen this before this is nothing new and that tells us we are headed to that area now we know that pensions they're going to be a huge problem in the next uh, financial disaster here according to one pension advocacy organization nearly 1 million working and retired Americans are covered by pension plans at the risk of collapse now according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics report from 2015 the average household income of someone older than 75 is around thirty four thousand dollars and their average expenses exceed that slightly at thirty four thousand and pensioners really have no flexibility 
But what we're seeing here is that this pension crisis, well, it is looming and it's getting closer and closer to the point where these pension funds, they're not going to have enough money to cover the pensions. And we're already starting to see this. When we look very closely at South Carolina's government pension plan, which covers roughly around 550,000 people, well, that is in the red by about $24.1 billion. These include former blue-collar workers, such as roughly 100,000 coal miners who face serious cuts in pension payments and health coverage thanks to nearly $6 billion shortfall in the plan for the United Mine Workers of America. And when that bill comes due, well, we're all going to be in very big trouble. And we can see this is not the only pension plan. We've mentioned many others. And we can see this is not just in one localized area. It is around the country. And when the market falls, this is going to wreak havoc on the pension plans. Now, we are seeing the stock market. It is fluctuating right now. And right now, the Dow has not seen longer losing streak since 1978. And as the Dow is in chaos right now, we see banks are crashing at this point. With yield curve flatter than before Trump's election and rates collapsing, well, we can see that the bank bulls, well, it is not looking good. Banks are now red year to date. And we can see Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, well, they've all declined. They are crashing. And what we're seeing right now is the beginning of the chaos. And we can see as we move throughout this year, it is going to get worse. Think about what just happened with the health um, debate where they couldn't pass their garbage health plan that they've been working on for seven years. Well, that's going to have an effect on the reform on taxes. And we can see that all of this is playing into the central bank, the deep state, because what we're seeing is that Trump is going to try to push his economic policies. He's going to try to do whatever he possibly can. And as the central bank, as the deep state continually puts up roadblocks, well, they're going to blame it on him. They're going to make sure that the corporate media is continually out there feeding the narrative that the economy is stalling. It's not doing that well. And Trump is continually trying to push his economic policies. And we can see already they're preparing for this. And we're heading in that direction. And as we move into the month of April, move into the month of May, it's just going to get worse. Now, we realize that the debt clock, it has been pushed back about $100 billion. And that is because of the cuts that Trump has made. But we went from $19.9 to $19.8 trillion, And we can see in the next month or two, um, we're going to be back to where we were before. And the debt ceiling is going to be something that needs to be looked at. And we can see that the government will start to run out of money. So we can see that things are all happening at once. Even if they raise the debt ceiling, it makes no difference. That just means we're just going to take on more debt. Think of a household that has a huge amount of credit card debt, and there's only a certain revenue coming into the household. If they take on more debt, what happens? Well, the household can't survive. That's what's happening here in the United States. And it looks like they're setting up a perfect scenario to bring the system down. This, the system's coming down no matter which way we look at it. It all depends on who brings it down and at what point they bring it down. And as we move further into this year, we're going to see more chaos. We're going to see more problems. And we're going to see the corporate media continually say the economy is losing steam. The economy is not doing well. The economy has stalled. And they're going to continually say it's Trump's policies. And they're going to start the blame game. And we can see this is the first stage. There's many different stages to this collapse. This is the first stage. They need the initial person to blame. They need that person to say he started it they'll finish it up with maybe with a cyber attack from another country or something else but they really need to start it off and then they'll start working it and making sure that the economy continually collapses and this is why you need to get prepared this is why you need to get ready because they're ready to go all out and they're ready to bring it down listen everyone thanks a lot for listening Financial arguments. Follow us on YouTube.
Now we can see today with the markets the chaos is completely continuing and we can see that the market closed down today and we can see at this point everyone is saying oh my god look at this the market's going crazy does this mean the market's going to crash tomorrow no the central bank the deep state they're not ready for it they're getting prepared and ready to bring it down but it's not that point that they need to do it because who are they going to blame this on are they going to blame them on themselves they can't blame them on trump it's too early so at this point we still have some time but we can see by looking at all the economic whereas january was was a month with deflation the current year-on-year -year inflation rate based on the cpi is 2.3 percent now it sounds like a no big deal you might think but in this case it is just one year ago in february 2016 the annual inflation rate was just 0.3 percent so what does this mean this means the inflation rate has almost eight folded in the past year with a very clear acceleration since October now several politicians and officials had been ringing the alarm bell as the savings ratio in the United Kingdom has been this hasn't been this low since the global financial crisis and in its latest update the Office of Budget Responsibility the OBR has confirmed that the savings ratio in the UK has now turned negative nothing to worry about our data by all the economic indicators we can see that things are rapidly starting to fall apart and when we look at the UK we can see that things are not going as well as everyone believes it is going now many people are gonna say well it's because the UK is gonna be leaving the EU and they're having the brexit this is the problem no that has nothing to do with it we've always seen these problems this has to do with what the central bankers have done over the many years and what we're seeing out in the UK is the office for national statistics well they released their inflation results for the British economy now even though most analysts were weren't expecting any huge differences the numbers updated until February paint a completely different picture now in February the inflation rate increased rather sharply on a month-to-month -month basis the CPI increased by by around 0.7 percent today well they won't have grown up until they're nearing their 50s I mean think about what is happening here now we know the EU the central bankers they don't want the UK to leave they're gonna do whatever they possibly can and they're still trying to keep them from leaving now Brussels right now is slapping the UK with a 100 billion bill for the EU army and of course everyone's saying wait what they want to leave why would they get a bill now the European Union is demanding that member states including the UK spend over 86 billion despite the fact that the UK has formally chosen to leave the EU now according to a report EU citizens expect more EU action in defense and security remember many reports ago we were talking about how the central bankers they want to set up their own army separate and apart from each country everything is fine what we're seeing here is inflation getting away from the central bankers and once they unleash the genie guess what it's very hard to put it back in the bottle now British citizens right now they're spending more than they are earning this means it won't be just the government debt level which will increase the total amount of household debt will increase as well and we're starting to see this in many different countries not just the UK if we look at Italy right now the Eurostat statistics on October 2016 showed that less than a third of underage 35s in Italy had left their parental home a figure 20 percentage points higher than the European average now the trend is expected to worsen as the economy continues to struggle researchers are saying that for Italians who turn 20 and 2030 it will take an average of 28 years to be able to live independently in other words many of the children that are in Italy 